do it again. Okay, this is Village of Minerva Park Council meeting, August 25th, 2022. We are at 7 p.m. and we will start with roll call. Councilperson Tresla. Present. Councilperson Brueger. Is not, he's on his way. I already knew that. Um, Council President Wolf. Here. Council Person Koss is also excused. Council Person McNamara. Present. And Council Person Camera. Present. And now Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have meeting minutes, um, two separate meeting minutes. We have August 15th council meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. And then we also have August 8th special council meeting minutes. Yeah, August 18th. 18th. Yeah. What said, did I say? You said 8th. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> August 18th special council meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? All right. Let's go to citizen comments. Do we have any? Yep. So this is the point. This Wouldn't it be best if we waited until Councilman Bruger got here? He's going to be involved in this meeting. He, he's, he's on his way. We have a quorum, and he is on his way. I just got a message from him saying that he's in the village, so he'll be here momentarily. And then maybe won't be your time to vote on him. Well, well, we'll see. But this is the point in the village in, or the meeting in which we invite any residents that are in attendance to address council. Uh, if you wish to address council, step up to the podium, uh, identify yourself uh, by your name and your address, and you have five minutes. I'll let you know when your five minutes has elapsed. Thank you. Dick Music, 2824 Maplewood Drive. And uh, I attended the Thursday night meeting that we talked about uh, the problem with the WPA tile. And out of that meeting, I gathered several pieces of information. One is that there is a known blockage between um, the Yasmin Market and the uh, northern building, which is a gray building, kind of nondescript. You can miss it if you go by fast. They said about halfway back. And then they indicated, or the village engineer indicated that uh, somewhere down on Ed Bell's property, 2620 um, Jordan Road, that there was another suspected blockage. They, the engineer also indicated that beyond that point, he was unable to find any of the pipe. Okay, This is WPA tile that was put in probably in 1937 without any easements. It's very poor documentation. And if you look at county maps, it gives two sizes, 18 and 15 inches, with question marks. So we, we're really not sure what's there. I do know that at, uh, from past experience at Tom, Berger's, Tom Newberger's house, at the back of that, there is a square, I think a square of cement with a grate. You can look down the grate and see the pipe. The only other one is up near Cleveland Avenue behind the uh, uh, Yasmin Market, and it goes underwater right now because all the water from Ivywood is coming, getting blocked between the two buildings, going into the Yasmin Center stuff, and then overflowing. Um, I have gone over the area to the east of the, of the uh, Bell property, and I can locate the tiles. It's a mysterious pro uh, process that I will go into with the committee, uh, but I have done this process for 60 years. I also went up and looked at the two basins and found where they connect, and it's really kind of strange. I won't go into the details, but the uh, some pipes go off their property in Columbus, and then go into us. Very strange. I have never tried to locate blockages, but this is a big pipe, 18 inches. 
I believe that I have found the blockage near Cleveland Avenue, and I believe I found the blockage right at the western end of the Ed Bell's property. The blockage on near Cleveland Avenue is only a foot to six inches, very, very well defined. The blockage down at Ed's is less well defined and is probably two and a half to three feet in length. So, if we're going to spend $550,000, it would strike me that maybe the approach would be to go in and fix these two known blockages and see where we are. And, and that's what I propose. I also would volunteer to demonstrate the process that I use uh, for any members that are interested. And I'm pretty sure that I can convince you that I'm not a quack. I, I do have a master's degree from OSU. I taught in the College of Engineering for 19 years. I've been able to do this process, this mysterious process, for over 60 years. And if you talk to any plumber, uh, they will say, of course that works. But there is no information in the literature that significantly explains the process. So with that, I just wanted to offer the demonstration. Oh, one other thing. I did talk to Ed Bell this afternoon, and Ed is perfectly willing to have the village come in and excavate around the area, the three-foot area, if, if that's something the village is interested in. All he would ask is that he basically gets restored. And it's not going to be, uh, it's, it's a junk grass area. It's not near his house. It's, it's back by his shed. Oh, and the letter that I sent to the street committee said I couldn't determine Thank you very the much for your, the your shed, time is up. But I got in there today, and it's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Busek. Thank you. Knowing Benedetti. 2937 Berryland Court. You know, tonight I'd like to take one last shot at getting you guys to reconsider passing this next uh, ordinance that you're about to, the very first one on the agenda. I'd like to explain to you the process that we went through on council. And there's three members of council here that can refute this, if, uh, what I'm about to say, is that, you know, this, the council was not involved in the process of planning out the community building floor plan. Uh, there was one meeting in the beginning where we met with the architects and explained our uh, hopes for the building. At that time, I know for a fact that I mentioned having the community building on that side of the building. Uh, so, and at that time, we were told that, or at, well, then we had another meeting where the plan was presented to us, and the mayor and the chief came up with the floor plan and Eric Fisher. Uh, the only member, uh, a resident of the village involved in the planning was the mayor. And so after the mayor came up with the plan that we're all looking at here, this is what the mayor came up with. I brought up uh, why, why can't the, build, the community room be on the other side of the building? And we were all told that it's too expensive. It's too expensive. As I said in the last meeting, we have yet to hear why it would cost more money to put the community building on or community room on this side of the building. Uh, it, so, one, you know, it, it, it makes no sense that they can move the police department out that side of the building, but they can't move the community room over to that side of the building. So. Tonight, guys, I am begging you guys to table this for right now because you have yet to determine what alternate you want to do. You and I don't. Do, apparently, you've come up with a plan for moving to a new space, but you know there's three ways that this could go. Is tonight you can pass this by emergency and upset a whole bunch of people here in the village who, as you've seen, you know people have reached out on Facebook. I know that most of you. Don't think that matters any, but there are people who are involved in the facility committee that do not like this plan and, and would like to see the community room on that side of the building. Now, we've got 
you know, in the, when this all started, money was a big issue, and I'm saying that it is, uh, isn't a big issue, but we've got five and a half million dollars to spend on improvements to the village, and have yet to have a real conversation about what that means, and where we're going to spend that money that, that's left over. So, you know, like I was starting off, you can, pass, you can pass this as an emergency, or you cannot pass it as an emergency and face a potential referendum, which isn't going to do anything to help this project get done right now. It is absolutely the last thing I want to do is to, is to, is to have a referendum and then, you know, drag this out forever. Like I'm saying, the other third option is for you to table this for tonight and start to have a real discussion with the residents about why we can't move the community room out to this side of the building. It's, it's that simple, guys. And I'm begging you once again to do the right thing tonight, not pass it as an emergency, and just basically spit in the face of the residents who I think by majority would like to have an opportunity to vote on this. So again, please table this, res or this ordinance tonight so we can get support of the residents behind this. Because right now, you guys are the only ones who really understand what's going on right here. And myself, because I've you know, kept up with this. You know, this just all of a sudden, uh, you know, we got a, a, a bid that's okay a, a week and a half ago. You know, so slow down, guys. Slow your roll. Do what's right and table this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Benedetti. My name is Ron Benedetti. I'm at 2937 Berry Lane as well. Uh, I'm new to all of this. Professionally, I do continuous improvement. I'm about getting people to communicate better and just make sure that we're all going towards the same goal. Um, listening to my dad ramble is a bit tough at times, <laughs> but uh, after Listening through all of the noise, I feel like we have an opportunity to better align what this village's vision and legacy will be in the future. Um, it sounds like we have tons of different projects from blockages and building improvements. Like, what are we looking to do with this area? I mean, at the end of the day, I don't own a property here. I'm a guy that takes my son fishing at the lake, and I like to play my ukulele at the park. You know, like, how are we creating more of those experiences? Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, that's me, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry I missed the uh, start of the meeting by about three minutes there. I was at another meeting downtown and rushing to get back here. President Wolf can check his text and confirm oh, yeah. that yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. met it a few minutes know. late and even let him know when I had turned into the village, not that I was texting and driving. Is that a stop? No, no, no. I understand. My kids would still say, don't do that. Yeah. Just stand up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on to legislation. And this should be a fun round of this. Okay, starting with Ordinance 24 2022. In order to accepting a certain bid from Weaver Commercial Contracting Inc. for remodeling and construction of the Minerva Park Municipal Building and declaring an emergency. All right, so why don't we pause here if I can jump in on you. Because you sure can. Now is when we want to have the discussion around the alternates so that the, uh, the piece of legislation can be amended. Right? Yeah. With that exhibit A that you have there in front of you that is sort of blank. Uh, and then we can pass it with that amendment. Yep. Or vote on. Vote on the vote, amendment. Vote on it pass it. along with. So, well, Council President, it looks like you are making a motion to amend. So, do you want well, to Well, first, that? let's have the discussion. Okay. Right? So, uh, I was trying to look about. at our, trying to find our list of the amend, of the alternates, but I don't have it here in front of me. You have the list uh, yeah, right I have it. Like okay, why don't you? Steer and I know we had them labeled one through whatever. Okay. Why don't you just see raise, you know, seven. one through seven? Yeah. So, so I'll read these out. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have a exhibit A here. I'll type it up live okay. as we talk, and then that will be, we'll incorporate that once I get the all clear. Beautiful. Okay. So number uh, one was? Number one is the police carport. Right. Uh, do you want me to go through the numbers? Uh, yeah, just just for well, why don't we start with what it is, 
the, uh, uh, the bid price, and then we can take a temperature and see if more discussion is necessary. Can so, I can oh. I make one little comment? Sure. Um, these were discussed in a council meeting. Or yeah. This is not the first time that most of us have heard this. Mm -hmm. um, there were several people in attendance on the August 18th meeting, mm -hmm. um, and these were all discussed in depth yeah. at that particular meeting. Yes. Excellent. Okay, the police carport, Garmin Miller, our architect, um, estimated $60,000. Weaver Commercial bid 91800 for it. That's $31,800 difference between estimate and bid. Mm -hmm. That is alternate one. Alternate two is the electronic message. Uh, Garmin Miller estimated $35,000. Weaver bid $48,580. About $13,000 difference. Alternate three was a woodland plant mix. Garmin estimated $10,000. Weaver bid $30,680. Uh, Alternate four is switching the currently planned metal roof to asphalt shingles. Garmin estimated that that would knock about $90,000 off the price. Weaver uh, bid that that would knock about $55,500 off the base price. That's alternate four. Alternate five is the manual transfer switch. Garmin estimated that at $20,000. Uh, Weaver bid at $34,730. Uh, alternate six is concrete steppers. Uh, Garmin Miller uh, estimated 5,000. Weaver came in actually at 4,220. Uh, 4,220, I'm sorry. That's alternate six. Alternate seven was a glycol snow melt system to the sidewalk. Garmin bid that at 50,000. Weaver, uh, or I'm sorry, Weaver bid that at 90,100. Those are your seven alternates. So as a council, let's, let's go down the list. So alternate one, the police carport uh, bid in at approximately 90,000. I also, you know, I'll start the conversation and say that I, I don't believe that that is uh, something that is a priority. Do other people believe that that should be accepted? And I'll add to that. At our last meeting, we discussed it. That was one of the things that we kind of concurred is not one that we would want to do. If there's someone who wasn't there who wants to make a case for it, we can yeah. reopen it. But at our previous meeting that had, I believe, four council members, did. Uh, we decided that was not worth it. If someone who wasn't there wants to say, ooh, but that sounds awesome, now's your time to, to talk. Or even the people who didn't like it before. Or who may have changed their mind. Yes, able to change their mind. I remember, I believe I remember the discussion being that the carport, you know, while it would be helpful, um, wouldn't, um, like, because we don't have the police vehicles for years and years and years on end. That it wouldn't be a huge cumulative cost saver. That being said, I do. I wish the thing was cheaper because I would love to see our, you know, police vehicles be maintained, you know, sure. under a roof, and I'd love to, you know, provide the, uh, you know, our officers with a, you know, clean and dry work environment. So I mean, could I we? I'd Chief, be in favor yeah. of it, but I. I will. We'll, we'll, we we let, let Chief chime in. Do you, do you have an impassioned plea or? Uh, strong feeling one way or the other or at least for future what are some of the biggest benefits of it yeah. that would help your guys's department even if it's not something we do today but to put it on so uh, i think the biggest help is uh it keeps it in the shade uh, we have a lot of electronics in there and i think in the summertime when the temperature inside of the vehicle gets up above that 140 160 mark um, we start to um, have some issues with radios and, uh, computer components, those types of things. That would certainly help. It's also helpful when we're carrying gear from the department out and getting under the shelter to load up a vehicle. Um, that's nice. So, uh, is it a, nece a necessity? I can't say it's ne a necessity. Um, if we were, uh, if we had Tesla vehicles, I would I would say that it would be a necessity because of the design of the coolers. Um, ice just freezes up shut and can't get into them, so you have to have them covered. Uh, but I, I can't, I can't truthfully say it's a necessity, but it'd be very nice. Fair. So I think, uh, and I totally appreciate the opinion, and maybe in my imagination I can think of some ways to accommodate the, the needs that maybe are, are less than a four-car carport that could be part of a future discussion, but I... 
unless unless anybody else says otherwise, I think we're going to move on and not accept uh, alternate one. So alternate one was the electronic messaging center. Two. Oh, two. Pardon me. Yes. <laughs> uh, alternate two, the electronic messaging center, which uh, again, refresh my what was the bid number? Uh, Garmin estimated it at thirty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Weaver said they could do it for forty-eight thousand five eighty. Okay. Uh, and we received some examples in our email today. Full electronic, multi-light, looked pretty pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, I think that this one was one that we were generally in favor of when we discussed it last week, particularly because it would be a great opportunity for uh, enhancing communication within the village, right? Uh, having a board out there that people can read as they pass it uh, with rotating signs or, you know. For all out there listening to this who's confused, if you drive up Dempsey Road past the London Township, I the closest one I can think mm -hmm. of, on your way to Ennis Woods, and in front of their police slash senior slash everything center there, they have one out front. Yeah. They, you know, this Saturday electronic stop off, this remember to stay yeah. sober, et cetera, et cetera. All, all kinds of good information. So uh, does anybody have anything they wanted to say regarding this? One way plus minus. So I would I would suggest that we add this or so we accept alternate two. Any strong opinions opposed? Addition. Pardon? I think it's a wonderful addition. There you go. Uh, then number three. So, uh, Jesse, you can include alternate two. Okay. Alternate number three, woodland plantings for beds and west side of building. Um, my recollection is that uh, while Councilman McNamara was uh, quite passionate about this idea. I don't think anybody opposed the idea of native plantings, uh, but that maybe this was not, not uh, the time or the place or the when or the why. Uh, so I, go ahead and make, you, you make your case again. If you Well, it, native plantings are the solution to many environmental problems. That being said, the location, may, if, if it's taken to its logical conclusion, would take away, um, you know, options to have outdoor events at this community building. So I would love for that to be revisited, you know, maybe once you've got the place, you know, framed out and we can see where things could be planted. But mm -hmm. as currently written, I, I don't want to feel selfish. <laughs> no, I, and I, I, I agree with Councilperson McNamara, a uh, good Kentucky bluegrass is better than any native species we can plant there. <laughs> And we should just keep it grass. No. Do not uh. troll him. <laughs> do be nice. All right. Uh, so I think that's a that's a pass on alternate number three. For now. For now, right? It's 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 a project Once that could be taken. Once everything's done, up. we can plant native things. Mm -hmm. Probably less than thirty thousand dollars. Potentially, yeah. So uh, alternate number four: asphalt shingles in lieu of a metal roof uh, for a reduction of approximately fifty-five thousand. Um, my recollection from last Thursday with this was a, a non-starter all around. Does anybody else want to make a case otherwise? All right, so we are not taking, uh, uh, what is that, one, two, three, four. So moving on to alternate number five, manual transfer switch for a backup generator uh, for approximately 35,000 yes. if I recall. Yes. Uh, and this one, my recollection from last Thursday's discussion, that we were on board. I believe general. this has been changed, though, hasn't it? Is, so we were on board, and we had a uh, conversation, a conversation with Eric and Garmin mm -hmm. Miller and uh, construction litigation attorney in our office, that as the building progresses, uh, I, I believe last week you mentioned a concern about kind of turning this into like an emergency shelter, having a full-on generator, and we, de we determined that it would be permissible that as the construction progresses, you can make a change order to bring in a full-on generator that would eliminate the need for a manual transfer switch. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that, that earlier. Today. So so we are we are dropping this in lieu of uh, a change order. A change order. A potential it's, for a change order. A minor order. upgrade on the scope of the work yep. that's already going to be. So. That makes sense. So then we will leave that one. Which makes more sense than having a switch that we could somehow store some portable generator and pull yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put a real generator in and be able to. I mean, yeah, no, better better, uh, better solutions for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, then we are down to number six, concrete steppers on path between lower south and upper west lawns. And so this would be 
a concrete stepper path going around uh, this side of the building here to give step access from the front to the back of the of the building. Uh, keeping me honest again, this was about six grand. Four thousand two hundred one. Four thousand hundred and twenty. Uh, yep, and this was one that on Thursday we were generally in favor of. Does anybody else? I just have a question. Yeah. And don't take this wrong. That's but are we inviting wrong. people to the back of the building for no reason? I think that's the question. Well, so it's public property, right? So well, they're I, always invited to. I get all that, sides but I, the there's building. there's there was a there was obviously a reason it wasn't put in there initially. I doubt that. Well, it's not. I think I think well, it wasn't yeah, but put the there. The reason might have been no one thought to do it, and they're yeah. like, "Yeah, it's the side of the building. Put it here." Put it and there. And then someone said, "Wait, don't they have a deck out back and yeah. stairs coming down from the deck to the backyard? How are you going to get there without going through the building?" And just no yeah, one thought. I would say no one thought of it. It is. I, I would say it's inviting greater utilization of the space. Okay. I mean, is your concern for people? I, no, I don't or? know. I don't know why. What it's uh, what it's where it's taking you to. I mean, it's, it's taking you to. I mean, if it's taking you to the lake, that's fine. Yeah, it's taking you to the lake. The building's taking you to the back there. deck, right? So, if part of the the grand scheme is that there's a back deck that people may utilize for purposes at three o'clock in the morning and all of that. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, if, okay. if they want to come and tras <laughs> trespass at our police station, that's <laughs> that's a, a boffo winner of a way to get yourself arrested. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm just curious what the steps are going to and what like again, why huh? weren't they in the well, initial plan? Anyways, coming from yeah. Leading to it. So. Yeah. No, the stairs aren't the issue. I'm just curious what the purpose of the stairs versus the way that it was a mulch so the, path before. So a mulch path to me means you weren't really walking through there before. Yeah. So yeah. the person who has to do maintenance on that side of the building has nice stairs steps down. to walk down. That's a good answer. I right? was just curious what it's going to. You know, or the you know, I. As I understand, it's going to come down the left hand side of the building there and end up down by the deck. Yeah. So it's. And if you recall, we have parking on the left-hand side. There's going to be parking out on that side. So you could park, get out of your car, walk down the steps, be at the back of the building, walk mm -hmm. up to the deck and go to your or party, go or just or walk down the back of the steps and go have this nice little view. secluded lake view. view the, the, there you yeah. go. But again, uh, to roll it back, last Thursday we were all generally in favor of this. Does anybody yep. have a strong, different opinion today? All right, so then uh, that is number six. We, yes. can, we can add that to the amendment to accept. Hold on, I have a... Uh, there you go. Uh, village planner, uh, Mr. Fisher, uh, basically just texted me to say exactly the same thing we just said, that it's to come around and connect to the deck. It was added for access for events. There you go. There you go. Uh, and last uh, and not least in any regard, glycol snow melt system in sidewalks north of building. Uh, and the not bid estimate was. Bid estimate was ninety thousand one hundred. Uh, and I believe this was like the first uh, absolute non-starter. So unless anybody wants to try to start that back up, no. all right okay, then. No. Even even the village maintenance person is shaking his head no, and he's the one that <laughs> has to shut most likely would, would be flow. yeah be responsible for snow removal. So he's he's saying no thank you. Then I think we're all saying no thank you. Use some of that ninety thousand. So do you want to review flow. what the right. amendment is? Sure. So what I have here is I have the live exhibit A that will have you incorporated. It has alternate two, the electronic message center accepting a bid of forty eight thousand five eighty. And alternate six concrete steppers accepting a bid of 4220 for a total of 52800 uh, And then what I just did is I added that to Weaver's base bid of $3,153,000. Uh, that came to a total of $3,205,800. I added Garmin Miller's estimates for those two alternates to their base estimate of $2,950,000. And it comes within, uh, they then divided those numbers, it comes within 7% of it. So we're inside the 10% rule and Beautiful. we're good to go. Beautiful. And with that, I move. Can I see the top of it? Do you want to do the motion? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, I will move uh, for passage on Ordinance 24 2022, an ordinance accepting certain bid 
a certain bid from Weaver Commercial Contractor Inc. for remodeling and construction of the Northern Park Municipal Building and declaring an emergency. Before we get a second, yes. I would let's amend it to include Exhibit oh, A. Oh, and amending it to include Exhibit A. Thank you. Yep. That's what I was trying to imply that, but had not said those words specifically. We, we did no, 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 no. no. We're, we're, we're just moved. We're passing with yeah. that amendment. Okay. Second. So, Councilperson Camera seconded. Okay. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion on this before we vote? Anybody? I, I guess I have a question. I'm trying to understand it to the fullest extent. And a couple of my council people that surrounded me have been so helpful. So, thank you to the ones that's helped a lot. And I guess it would be for uh, Jesse. Is at any time, can this appear as if we are bypassing, bypassing residents' ability? to be involved the way they want. Um, to it, Does this stop them from being able to file that referendum if they want? Does this stop that? And with our history, and I don't want to say with our history, with the history of what some people assume that we have, does this, or in any way, shape, or form, even a little bit, can this look like we are being anything but fully transparent and bypassing that for residents? I would never say that someone could see it that way. I would say that working with other municipal governments, you have a very legitimate reason to declare this an emergency. Very legitimate. Frankly, the fact that we got a bid is, is excellent. I mean, the market right now is absolutely crazy. If this, if this is ever to get done, uh, I think now's the time to do it. I think that you've had some town halls uh, that got people involved to look at the, look at the project. Uh, I think it's a strong project. Uh, there's always going to be disagreements with certain issues of it, but I think that uh, this is ripe for an emergency. It does, it does eliminate the, the ability to, to bring a referendum, uh, but the, the court's opinions on that is that uh, if council feels strong enough to pass something by emergency, their ability to call the question on that comes up at the next election of council members. So if you feel confident about the plan and, and the time you put into it, which I think is significant, then I, I would feel comfortable moving forward with it. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate that. Any other discussion desired? I'm just going to make a point of clear, a clerical error. Oh. I need to change the dates in here. Oh, as yeah, well. in the, it's the 11th, the 15th, and the 25th. Okay. Did you hear that? Okay. All right. Are we ready? All right. Okay. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Councilperson calls this excuse. Councilperson Tresta. No. And Councilperson Brueger. Aye. We got us a project. There you go. Thank you. And let's move to the next one. Okay, moving on to Ordinance 25 2022. An ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for the current expense of the Village of Maryland Park for the year 2022. Um, I see here you want us to waive readings, but I do not know what these appropriations are. He I is. Yeah. That's Can why you? he's here tonight. Awesome. Yeah. That is why he's here. There he is. Um, no, I don't. I, I, somehow I don't. I mean, I can't read it on my phone. Do you, I don't do actually get them? the information. Yes. What does he need? No. Do you have the I just have cover sheets. I never have any I'll information get behind me. I do have it. So, yeah, Jeff, do you want to walk through the... No, that's what I'm saying. I just have cover sheets. I don't yeah. have it was, it was emailed to us in the packet, but he doesn't, he doesn't have the full packet. Thank he you. just has the agenda. There, there are a few items that came up very recently that need to be appropriated that are not appropriated. And some of this is also cleanup. So just running down the list real quick. The increase in the supplies of the for the police department is the cost of fuel. And $60,000 in capital outlay is for ordering a new car that we need to get on the list and it would be delivered sometime second, third quarter next year. It's that far out. Similar to what we did yeah. what, about a year ago, where we were ordering it ahead of time because mm -hmm. we know we're not going to get it paid for until next year anyway. But we need to provide them with a purchase order, so we have to do it. Yeah. Those are the proper steps. Uh, the public health, uh, county health department, that's a deduction that comes on the property tax settlement. 
we were off on the estimate for the year by $700, so we had to bump that up. Okay. Uh, provide and maintain parks. We have almost exhausted our appropriations in those two categories for the year, so just picking up some additional spending authority on it. Uh, under the swimming pool, as you may recall, we had to increase the rate for lifeguards, which had an effect on the budget. So we had to bump up the personal services, $12,000 to cover the cost of the lifeguards for the rest of the year. And that also forces an increase in the related benefits. And the contractual services, materials, and supplies are nearly exhausted, so we're picking up some additional spending authorities so we can get the pool closed and taken care of. Uh, community environment, the uh, community planning and zoning. Uh, wages have been running a little bit higher than expected back when the budget was originally done. So there's a request to increase the uh, salaries there and related benefits that go with it. Uh, similar situation exists within the mayor's office covering the part-time person that's involved. So again, same thing. Uh, under the fiscal office, that's me, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think I was quite taken into what count when the appropriations were done back then. So uh, that's adjusting for what's taking place for the rest of the year for the uh, fiscal office. Okay? Under liens and buildings, the contractual services takes into account the lease on the new off or temporary office space plus the additional uh, Cost for moving. We need to get in there and have some cleaning done and painting done that we're responsible for. So all of that is included in the, the fifty-six thousand. The supplies and materials again are existing appropriations are nearly So we're just picking up a little bit extra there. Uh, income tax collections. Uh, we pay currently three percent of the year. Eventually, into the new year, they re. Uh, evaluate and we get a slight refund back but again we need to uh, bump up the cost for collections 15 grand we're looking at about 1.8 1.9 on income tax for this year that's a little bit ahead of last year um, so on that one that's just adjusting for <coughs> we're getting more than we thought we granted we originally budgeted to give Rita three percent and now we're giving three percent of a bigger number yes thank you okay uh, other general government services, again, that appropriation is nearly exhausted, so it's just an additional fund or authorization for spending there. I have nothing specific to go with it, and that is an area where it's just miscellaneous items that come into play that aren't defined elsewhere in the budget. Okay. Uh, the CARES Act fund, there's $109 left in the fund requesting the appropriations so we can spend that and close the fund out. Okay. Uh, basically, for storm sewer maintenance, there is another ordinance, a resolution here, authorizing the uh, flow line to do some work, to check the lines, and also a resolution out there for a grant writer to pursue grants for some storm sewer improvements for us. So my man is right, is that a $65,000 increase in contractual services yes. for the basic utility okay. services? Yes. And that's going for? Uh, I think it was 51000 for flow line and checking the lines. So mm -hmm. that's that's the price for flow line to yes. do the Correct. scoping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the grant writer is also and in there the if, you, writer, if yeah. you guys yeah. have that. Yep. I was just grant writer. Grant writer has steps involved in getting grants. Mm -hmm. Right now, the resolution or yeah, in here and we pay him a rate out. or him or her mm -hmm. them a rate because they're it's their job. Which right. um, are they talking about? Sewer maintenance, sanitary, or the storm? Uh, same thing with flow line. We have the contract to authorize them to uh, check the lines on that and decreases. There's net service expenditures originally appropriated in that fund that are no longer necessary because there's a separate debt service fund where the appropriations reside. Um, water line phase three, appropriations were above the estimated resources, so I need to drop those down $23 to stay in compliance with 
budgetary law. Uh, Village Facilities Fund has $5,700 remaining in that fund, and that's just appropriating the balance so that if something comes along, we can spend it and, and get that fund closed out. Uh, sanitary sewer project for 2020 was also over-appropriated at the beginning of the year, and we're I'm reducing the appropriations down and stay in compliance with budgetary law. Okay. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> Just teasing. Any other questions? Uh, so I, I'm going to ask, um, you know, we are constantly, uh, uh, constantly doing everything we can to improve our transparency. This only came to council a very short while ago. 11, 11 a.m. And, and that was the sum total of explanation that we've gotten. Is there anything in this that is, in fact, time critical that it couldn't wait to the first meeting of September? I would assume that the swimming pool people are still getting paid as that that is probably one uh, issue. Appropriations for salaries there has been consumed. There's very little left, so that is a priority there. Uh, and in order to certify the contracts for flow line, those appropriations need to be right. passed too. Okay. okay. And am I reading this right? Is this a change of five hundred and one thousand dollars across all funds? Correct. Yes. Across all funds. Yes. Right. That's I, everything. I'm going to second. I'm not going to vote to waive readings on something that I've had for nine hours that appropriates yeah. half a million dollars. I'm um, not with the explanations I've been given. Well, can we I need to I, I missed one item in this list. Okay. Uh, there is a two hundred and thirty thousand dollar advance out of general fund that is necessary in order to meet the debt service payment on the TIF bonds that were issued. And that I, I would probably vote for with yeah. waiving readings. But yeah. the other can 270, we, I don't quite understand. I, yeah, uh, I, I, I understand. It's not a full finance meeting yeah. before something like this happens. Yeah. At least a I work can, session or I something. I can understand That's an appetite, too, if you're, if you're doing an appropriation ordinance or resolution, whatever it is, uh, you know, to try to do it all in, in one fell swoop. But this is an awful lot with not a whole lot of notice. Can we amend this to just include those items that were deemed uh, in, Extreme. Need of, in, in need of expedition, right? Meaning the swimming pool personnel services, personal services, the, I think the other one was under storm sewer, uh, Contractual services, right? Is so where I'm just we trying might. to name them so that we can. Do we have another ordinance tonight that's going to get that fund, or is that authorized? Enough so the storm sewer ones can wait a week. All the storm sewers. Well, it's going to be more than a week, though, right? Well, the, we, we we're not going to pass it until the eighth. The next meeting, the storm and sanitary. Okay. And the grant writer yeah. is not going to be so until personal services for the pool, and the. 230000 to pay the TIF revenue Well, I think it's going to be any of the personal services. His. Okay, the, so, so all the personal services. I, so I would assume they're all getting close. Yeah, um, so I would say, give you a second, we'll put a star next to the ones that are time. And that yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll have someone move can we just to come, amend it. Can we skip this one for a few minutes and not table it? Yeah, but yeah. Like, skip this one, we, let them work yeah. on it, and then yeah. let's go to the yeah. next one? We will, yep. That way we we're not we're rushed. We're happy to give you some time to get that in a little more order. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next one down the list is then resolution 2022-24. Resolution authorizing and approving the execution of a contract with Flowline LLC for inspection, cleaning, and video recording on certain sanitary sewers. This has been in the works, so is it is our third reading of it. Is it the third? Yeah, it's okay, then I August 11th, 15th, and 25th. So this... This is one of the contractual services that we were appropriating money. Yeah, so, sorry. So we, we should include that one in the appropriation, Jeff, if you would be. 
That's yeah. going to be both of them then. Well, the unless it doesn't pass, in which case you can pull it right out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's not, let's that was not my uh, start counting <laughs> chickens here. <laughs> Just got a basket of eggs. That's it. Okay. <laughs> um, and I read all of it through. This is the $39,000 for them to go in and scope. Uh, this is just part of our normal seven-year rotation, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. This isn't anything new for people watching at home. We divide the village into seven parts once every and every year for a seven-year rotation. We put scopes down. We see what's there. Flow line will even clear out some mild to medium blockages. They're not going to re you know replace or crush a pipe, but they'll tell us it's crushed. But if there's some leaves and stuff in there, they'll do their best to get them out. This just keeps our sewers maintained. Uh, this is the third reading, so I'll move for passage. Second. Oh, go ahead. Good. Council person. Second person. by one of these two guys. Choose them. Okay. You pick them. All right. And we have Council Person Tresla. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Brueger. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Okay, that has now passed, and we'll see if we end up funding it later. Ooh, the suspense is awesome. <laughs> okay, resolution 2022-25, a resident authorized, excuse me, a resolution authorizing and approving the execution of a contract with Flow Line LLC for inspection, cleaning, and video recording of certain storm sewers. Uh, essentially the same thing as the last one, but these are storm sewers instead of sanitary. This is a third meeting. Uh, real quick, the cost on that is 51000 Again, this is just part of our seven-year standard maintenance cycle. I move approval. Move for passage. I move for a passage. Thank you. Second. Okay. Wait, hang on a second. Passage because it is Bill a resolution, not an ordinance. There we go. I had to make sure I did these, but no. But is somebody looking at it? Yeah. 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 I'm looking at it. I just want to make sure the amounts are right for the right ones. 51 for the storm and 39 for the sanitary. 51 so for the storm. Okay, I, I was back. Why, why does the sanitary sewer one contain the streets that we're looking at, but this one does not? I do have them because I got them later and I didn't have it. Hang on. You want to read it for the record? Or can we amend this and put it in? If you can read them off. And, yeah. yeah, we can. Or we won't be taking questions at this time. Okay. We won't be taking questions. Are, do you guys want the storm or sanitary? Which one am I missing? You have the storm or no? We have the sanitary, not the storm. Storm, Alder Vista Drive, Maplewood Drive, Lakewood Drive, um, Quiet Brook Vale. It says Quiet Brook Vale. It's going to be in the starting over there too. Mm -hmm. So Alder Vista, Maplewood, Lakewood, um, that entire that area over Those there. Are the south neighborhood. Yes. Mm -hmm. The south side. Good part of Yeah, south. both towns have a good south side. <laughs> That's what south sides are known for. Ever since I moved into it. Okay. All right. So we move to the south Oh, so I'm, I'm doing roll call? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I gotta find where I'm at. Council person Brueger? Aye. Council person Camera? Aye. Council person Tresla? Aye. Council president Wolf? Aye. Council person McNamara? Aye. Okay. I need a new sheet. Okay, next we have resolution 2022-27, a resolution authorizing and approving the execution of a contract with Amit. Municipal Consulting Group for ODNR Consulting Services and declaring an emergency. Um, excuse me. This is just a first reading. Uh, Mayor, would you like to go into it? Oh, and it uh, costs uh, $7,500. Uh, this is to research funding opportunities for the Jordan Road Storm Sewer Project. The aforementioned grant writer from the earlier conversation. Correct. Correct. Okay. So that is what that is for. And that and is not an emergency. So that maybe don't what is that an emer it's, it's as an emergency. It's as an emergency. But we got two more September twenty second. Correct. And and to be fair, all we're trying to do is get that moving before winter yeah. hits. Um, so cutting off that thirty days would really be helpful, or that may mm -hmm. not. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we're just Either trying to way, get just a yeah. first reading tonight. We can yep. flip it over and move on. Mm -hmm. 
All right, uh, resolution 2022-28, a resolution to authorize an advance from the Myrna River Park tax increment financing tax equivalent bond. Uh, this is a first reading. Does anyone out there want to explain what it is? I don't even know where we are. 2022-28, yeah. uh, that's oh. probably down here. Gotcha. This looks like a finance thing. As part of the bond sale, when they calculated the amortization schedule, the repayment schedule for the debt, they forgot to put a use of the first half settlement of, of uh, TIF payments to pay down uh, MI homes. And they didn't take that into account when they did the repayment schedule. So we're shy half a year's worth of revenue to make that debt service payment. The advance from general fund will provide resources to meet our debt service payment, and that will get paid back approximately over two years. Okay. So if I can try to explain it to the people at home, we set up a thing where we paid them $100 a year to pay back our thing. I know that's a made-up number, but it's a great number. The first year, we were supposed to pay back $100. MI had already taken $50 because the money was going to them for the first six months. We then collected the next $50 and owed them that $50 that MI took out. Is that roughly what's going on other than the nonsense numbers? Yes. And that is the $230,000 that's on this sheet, which is half of your half a million, just yes. to repoint that out. And that also then looks like we don't have to worry about passing that till September, so we don't necessarily need the money right now. Okay. Does that go to there you our go. Earlier, earlier discussion, if that yes. makes sense? Yes. Awesome. Well, that has been read for the first time. Okay, coming up to... Resolution 2022-29. This will be an interesting one. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement for temporary office space during the renovation of the Minerva Park Municipal Building and declaring an emergency with intent apparently to raise readings, if I'm seeing the bottom of this correctly. Correct. We are expecting um, construction to be able to begin in the first week of October, um, which means we would need to relocate before the first of October or we may not be in compliance with our construction contract. Um, we have the opportunity to move to a place that is one of the only places we have been able to find, which is directly across the street. So um, uh, which street? Uh, this is Corporate Drive, okay. which is um, 30 seconds out of the I village. Just, yeah, I, I know where that is. I just didn't see a yeah, the is address it? on here. Yeah, I might be missing the Lake Road. Oh, I know. Not. No, yeah, because there was also looking at things across Ponderosa. Yes. Correct. And various other. Places. We have Thanks. looked, um, as we did in the one meeting, we have looked at trailers. We have looked at potentially buying a house. We have looked at multiple lease options, and every place that we have found within a very short st stone's throw of the village is not available. Or you would have to do at least a minimum of five of a five year lease. Yeah. Um, this is the only place that we have actually found that is available that would suit our needs. Um, and obviously, as you guys are fully aware, trying to get any type of property right now is very difficult. And we either can move forward or we may not have the opportunity to do this one and we would be back to square one. And just real quick, Go I ahead. forgot to read it out. Uh, you said this is a 12 month lease for $36,000. Correct. I, just, I, to, I always like reading out my numbers on nope, you're good. Like Jesse's got something. And I, I'll say that I, over the past few days, we've been going back and forth with drafts and the lease with the council for the realtor and the, the, the commercial operator, and I feel comfortable with it now. Uh, it's a standard commercial lease. We've got some provisions put in there that are going to do some pre-cleaning for us. Uh, they understand we have leads, uh, limitations on who can come into the office and when. They put in uh, a month-to-month -month provision in the off chance that construction goes long so we don't get locked into another year lease. I think it's a good deal for the village it's from my two cents of it. And the reason for, and the other part to this, you know, when you start talking about last minute and things like that, mm -hmm. um, number one, we didn't want to send you something that wasn't finalized. We just got it finalized. We have worked on it the entire week, back and forth, trying to get this finalized and getting it to you guys as soon as possible. Um, there's a lot of moving parts that's going to go into this as far as emptying out this building, moving it, getting internet set up, moving a server. Um, it's going to be weeks for us to actually get into a new location. So that is the other reason as to could we wait until September? Could we do all of that? And that's, that's why we're asking to waive it is to get the keys and start getting some of the major things done. I we, we've had at least one robust discussion about councils 
uh, opinions on this process yes. and what what council was open to and willing to Correct. accept. And this is well within yes. the the bond, the uh, what's the the advice or the guidance the council gave the administration. Correct. So I think this is, you know, while while waiving readings is is a tricky practice, I think this is something that is well within the purposes. All right, so now we need to move to. Okay. All right, so. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, I know that we, first off, I see why we're waving as an emergency. We have to have a place to go. My question was, is I know for sure that we were looking at trailers in February. So how did we get to this point where we're now at an emergency if we were looking at options in February and, and now we're seven, eight months knowing that this was going to happen? We obviously knew because we were looking at trailers. So, how is it to where you're just getting this point, you know, a week before we have to get out? And again, if it is what it is, we have to get out, we have to get out, we have to have a place to go. But I'm just asking why we got to that point. Do you want me to take this? Anybody can. We can't sign anything, any type of lease, we can't buy anything unless we know where we're going. And until you guys pass this tonight, we didn't know if we were moving on to a new building. So in order to buy a trailer or in order to sign a lease, we can only do it once we know that this building is actually going to move forward. So we have actually gone and looked at trailers. We've had our maintenance person go and look at trailers. Those trailers, unfortunately, were not in any type of shape that we could use. Um, so at this point, we have, they would like to start October. So unless we postpone them to start in January, in which, you know, when you have contractors that are willing to do this project and able to do this project, you have to kind of move along with the construction schedule. So at this point, we can't, we could have never gone into a contract with anything. Um, there, obviously, the lease hasn't been signed until after we're moving forward on this building. Yeah. So or, that would be why. Or another way to say that would be we could have, but it would have been fiscally unreasonable, well, right? Correct. We well, to, to engage in a lease. To make that and then not. Yeah, to, to buy a trailer. Train? Yeah, to buy a trailer or to lease a trailer. I mean, it's the same reason that we don't have a moving. I mean, we do not have a contract with the moving company yet. You guys will, you know, probably hear about that later on, but we can't tell them where we're moving to, which is no, going to, it, because we don't, it, as right. of right now, until this lease passes, we still can't set up a moving company. Yeah. So there's so many moving parts, we can't set up internet until we have a place to move. So it's just, it is, it's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of an ask of council. Um, and I, you know, to say it, it shouldn't be a surprise to that many residents at this point that these are the things that are gonna be coming with this. Now, does it make it better? No. but. It's, it's something that there's not a lot of options to be fiscally responsible. I, I, I guess my question, and this kind of goes along with, with, with Nikki, and one thing she said, she said to me the other day, and I didn't realize it. If we thought this was going to be an option we were doing in February, and it's entirely possible because I miss things, as everyone knows, and I'm watching it on home, I was three minutes late tonight. <laughs> I don't remember hearing that we might have to move out of this building until about two weeks ago. I don't remember that ever being mentioned or brought up or discussed in a work session or, hey guys, we don't know what it's gonna look like because we we'll have to wait for this and this. But if we've, known, if we've been shopping trailers since February, why hasn't council been told, hey, by the, because I was under the impression that part of the reason of what we were doing with our building was that we would stay in it during the, the rethink. That was it. Now I understand it turns out there's much, enough asbestos and black mold in here that you can't pull a nail out of the wall without a hazmat suit. No, and that's, that's why we can't be there. But I'm just kind of worried why, why we have two weeks notice of this when it's been going over since February. I mean, even just a, hey look, this is something we're gonna have to do and it's gonna happen in a hurry. I think, go ahead. Oh, uh, I, I, my perspective, I will share my perspective is different because I was aware of the asbestos report shortly after it came in and I've been aware that this has been an issue upcoming ever since. So now if somehow that information either wasn't disseminated to you or it didn't stick or whatever, sorry. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, communication is, Communication is, is the lifeblood, and we all know that communication can always be better. There's no such thing as perfect communication. But at some point, you're dealing with the, the reality in front of you. So, you know, we can take that for a note, and, you know, we can all raise our hand more and say, what, what aren't I seeing? Mm -hmm. And that can be reviewed more and more often. But 
here and today if, you know, we couldn't have done this. We couldn't take this action any sooner because even if, say, tonight we passed well, we it. We couldn't not, take this action. I understand yeah, that. Yeah. But I also understand it's been being looked at for six months and wasn't presented officially as something, even though we didn't. When we got it presented, we didn't know where we were going to lease. Right. We didn't know when we were going to yeah, yeah. do it. It was just, these are our three options. My question is, why were the three options sat on for six months until two weeks before it had to be passed? It was then said, oh, by the way, in case you forgot, we need to do this. That, that, that's just my question. Um, and certainly, had I read the best of support, I would have perhaps realized, oh, geez, there's no way we're going to be able to be there during construction. Even though that was the assumption oh, when the plans were in fairness, I didn't, I didn't read the report. I talked to the guy who did the inspection. So, and chief wants to say something. Uh, can I maybe help here? Uh, this is the way that I believe this played out. We were going to move into trailers on site. They were going to be placed like back here, or over here, or somewhere, and that was why I think. Trailers were starting to look at back in February. Um, the mayor looked at some that were going to cost like a hundred thousand dollars, and then they were all the way down to these fifteen thousand dollar rat traps that uh, we looked at. But turns out that the um, the builder, because of the site plan, there was no room to put a trailer on this site. And it kind of changed everything, and the river was scrambling to try to find the relocation spot. Uh, we thought about trying to place some trailers over by the pool. By the time you put the trailers down, incorporated the electricity, the sewer, the water, um, it became mm -hmm. more expensive than lease. And I think this is how we land on this spot, if that helps. Thank you. And that email came probably about two to three weeks ago. Yeah. As an FYI. Yeah. All right. But here's here is where we are. So all right. First we need to move to suspend the rules and waive the readings. Yep. I will make a motion to waive the readings. I will second that. All right. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council Person Brueger. Aye. Council Person Tressa. Aye. And Council Person McNamara. Aye. All right, uh, same resolution, having waived the second and third reading, uh, we look to move to pass as an emergency. Moved and seconded. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. Councilperson Tresta. Aye. Councilperson Camera. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Awesome. And then we got to go back. Yep, We're not done. The appropriations amended. Now we gotta pay for some of the stuff we do. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys yes. need money. So, okay. Yes, please. Uh, on the supplemental nine, the easier way to do this is to strike out the departments. Okay. Okay. So, on the police department, take it out. We also need to get a resolution to you to authorize the purchase of the car, anyways. Mm -hmm. So next meeting, we'll bring both pieces to you. Okay. The public health department has to stay because that is a compliance issue already. Okay. Let me get it on my phone. I do not have all of those on the sheet. Oh, did you? No, I only have one sheet of the costs, not both of them. But if I pull up my phone, Hold on. I Just get here. that one. Here. You can have mine. Ah, thank you. Because once, once he's invited it all to you, you should probably read out yeah. what's included. Yeah. And then move to pass I started X's them. on them and then stars, but I don't know, you might have a better way to do it. Well, I believe, yes. There we go. Well, your X's okay. and stars will so, I, That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Police Department is out. The General Health District needs to stay because that's a compliance problem already. And there's nothing we can do about that. That is a deduction on our property tax settlement that we don't control. Okay. Uh, Leisure time activities are provided to maintain parks. Strike it out. The swimming pool, I would like to keep all of that to ensure we can get the lifeguards paid and the pool closed. Because that will happen before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. right. September 8th. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, community planning and zoning, strike it out. 
the uh, mayor's office, the increase there, take it out. The fiscal office, or treasurer's office, I would prefer to keep that because that's a necessity, not being self-serving here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'd and like a paycheck, is what he's trying to say. Gotcha. Okay. If we, if we, um, here, to say it another way, if we, if we do go beyond what is appropriated, we won't be able to pay Jeff. So let's pay Jeff. <laughs> Uh, lands and buildings, we need to keep that because of the lease. With okay. the, uh, yeah, we just passed the lease. We'll need yes. to pay the lease. Income tax administration. Um, no, okay, so that fifty-six thousand is the lease plus uh, plus thousand. Moving and plus, anything that. Yeah, it's because mm -hmm. the lease is thirty-six thousand, twenty thousand dollar cushion for moving expenses and setting things up and getting it. Yeah, just making sure I know what the numbers are. Mm -hmm. And we also have the uh, moving of the network and so on. Yeah, yeah, well, moving of lots of big okay. things. Uh, income tax administration, I'm okay for a little longer yet, so we can strike that one. Other general government. Okay, we are now on the pages I have. The, uh, well, and you said other general government. Strike yeah, that. Yeah, 2000, strike, strike that. Okay. Um, Did anyone do a quick running total on that? I'll have it in no. a second. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I initially was keeping the advance, but the first reading occurred on the authorization, so that's up in the air. So the the yeah, the advance yeah. we, we just we just it. we only read it once. We don't need it right yeah. now. I would say if we don't need it right now, let's it's not wait to read readings yeah. and okay. pass as an emergency. Mm -hmm. Something we don't need well, right it's now. It's an appropriation, so we don't need to pass yeah. as an emergency. But, just wait readings. Yes. Yeah. So general fund is ninety six thousand seven hundred now. That's a little different. Okay. Well, the advance was the largest chunk of that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, going down the rest of the list, the CARES Act grant, strike that. We'll come back. Okay. Uh, storm sewer maintenance, because of the contracts just authorized, we need to keep it. Uh, sewer maintenance because of the contracts again just authorized. We need to make keep that. And I would prefer to keep the reduction of the debt service because that's just a clean up and something that's, we're taking away spending authority there. It's right? also $23. I don't think anyone's gonna get okay. too worked up about it. Um, the $23 is also a compliance issue, so that means that that's a clean up item. Mm -hmm. okay. um, village facilities fund, strike that. 2020 sanitary sewer project is also a compliance issue and a cleanup item, so we need to keep that one. Okay? And hopefully, new grand total is 170473 Okay. I, can, I would suggest the amendment being. I move to amend this resolution as proposed by, uh, or move to amend this resolution by striking, and then we read the categories that need to be struck. Yeah. Okay, I uh, will do that then, because I did pay attention. Um, I move to amend this uh, ordinance 25 2022 by striking the following provisions uh, the security of personal and property, general fund expenditure, the leisure time activity fund expenditures, the community environment expenditures, um, underneath general government, striking the mayor's office and the income tax administration, but retaining the clerk, treasurer, fiscal office uh, expenditure, and the lands and building expenditure, um, and striking also the other general government contract services from that same fund. Um, other financial uses, the advances out. Oh, that's our total. It brings our new total of that section to 96,700. I would also amend it to strike out the general government, other government contractual services under the CARES Act, uh, retain the storm sewer maintenance, 2907, retain the storm, the sewer maintenance, 2910, 
contain waterline phase three debt services and strike out from the village facilities fund, the general government capital outlay, and from the sanitary sewer project 4909, keep that. I know I said and when I was saying strike out, that last one is a keep. <laughs> and keep that one for a thousand or for two hundred fifty dollars that we're actually getting back as we clean up that fund. Mm -hmm. um, so, it will on. all make sense. Jeff has one last thing to say. Why? What I was trying to do with listing everything here was identify everything that needed attention mm -hmm. and try to only come to council once with supplemental appropriation instead of multiple times. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I I cer we certainly understand the intent. It's just. Uh, a I lot, a lot in one bite with nary even uh, twelve hours. Yeah. You know. Does let's do this. Yes, but yeah. So he has. I have moved, to, uh, moved to moved to pass as amended, and I will second. Except it for, for. Do we actually just need to move to amend it? I would, yeah, I would oh, because I haven't moved to waive readings. Okay. We oh yeah, 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 yeah. So at this point, second. we're moving to amend it. Yeah, got period. It. Got so, it. so it's the new language so in front of us. I will still second that. Okay. okay. Does that need a voice vote? I don't think that needs a roll call, right? Uh, a voice is fine. Yeah, so that's just an all in favor. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay, we now pass getting pass back pass. to ordinance 2522 yes. as amended. Of course, you got to suspend the rules and waive the reading. I do, I know, but I, I have to say what ordinance I'm suspending the rules on. I can't just say, I move we suspend rules and wait readings on something. Yeah, we can. Um, back to ordinance 25-2022, as amended, an ordinance to make the supplemental appropriations for the current expenses of the village of Minerva Park for the year 2022. I move that we waive the second and third readings. Second. Moved and seconded. All right, Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Brugger. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. And Council Person Shrestha. Aye. All right. Having waived the two readings, I will move passage. No need to pass it as an emergency, as it is an appropriation. So uh, I move passage. Second. Excuse me. Okay. Council Person Shrestha. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council Person Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Bruger. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. And as far as I know, that ends legislation, unless something else was snuck in there that okay. I just haven't seen yet. <laughs> Heck no. Um, my only question is, do you want him to just bring the other one back on September 8th? Yeah, I think and the, bringing the rest back on September 8th. Um, one thing that I would ask that would be great is like, you know, the same way that you just explained everything, if you could email it out to us with that level of explanation, you know, would go a long way to helping us even, you know, even today, if it had come out at 11 oh. this morning with that level of explanation. That was my I fault. Might have been he actually to... asked me, should I do that? And I said, no, you're going to be here tonight. Just go over it. So yeah. I will take full credit on screwing that up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the whole package was being yeah. back no, and I, forth. I know. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, exactly. I'm okay emergency at the last fly, you know, throwing 30 grand at a problem. Half a billion, even if I know we knew it, I want to know, wait, why are we, uh, why was it just in the original, what are we going to do to make it that this doesn't happen next year? Well, he'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. So. And then we can go over it, um, you guys can go over it in the next work session, and do not yeah. forget the first, okay, wait, old business. Don't forget the next um, work session is now on Thursday, mm -hmm. September 1st. Um, at, is it at Minerva France? Okay, it's at, it's at Minerva France at 7 p.m. And I will not be there. So just as a reminder. So, I know. So we'll make sure that we get that to you before Thursday. That way you guys can go over it and any other legislation that we still have. Um, anybody else with old business? New business? Anyone? Um, there, don't forget we have community on 29th. Monday the 29th, and that is actually here. Communications. 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 Yeah. I know that. Communications Monday, and that is at what time? 7? 7, 7. 6, 7 p.m. And that's all I have. 
All right, move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. So round.